Welcome back everyone. We are here tonight with the ATX VGC Monday Night Friendlies. Uh, joining me in hosting duties tonight, we've got um, Chase over here on the top left. Um, well, awesome. Well. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, we're also joined tonight with Roll Costa, the winner of the latest uh, Texas VGC <laughs> um, Wednesday tour. Um, and we're going to be having four really awesome battles tonight. Um, super excited um so in the very first battle we're actually gonna be having uh justin snores versus adam um and then in our second battle uh we are gonna be having amy uh woke flossy versus white tigers um in our third battle we'll have our very own chase or no i'm sorry we'll have nibs um versus sir wilson and then the final one we'll have our commentator chase here taking on cherry do i see cherry mancake over there in the uh, in the chat. Um, so, uh, super excited. Um, as y'all remember, last stream was our affiliate celebration stream. Some of y'all were so awesome and came out. And um, then we have also been starting to stream the Wednesday night um, Texas VGC um, tournament. Uh, you got to see two games in Top Cut, for, or two sets in Top Cut from me, and then one set from Roller Coaster this last week. Um, we have to convince Roller Coaster to continue to win it, so we have game two every week. <laughs> um, or, you know, perhaps Chase might, uh, Chase or Nibs wants to make a run this week. I don't know about that one. Yeah, so uh, the other thing, tonight we're gonna be having a mix of series, so, um, we're gonna have a couple that are gonna be in series five versus a couple that are in series six. So we're super excited to kind of, uh, I think a lot of people got a lot of practice with series five in this last week. Some um, did it very successfully. Some of us, myself included, got a little tilted and uh, I never want to play in an IC again. I don't know about anyone else. <laughs> um, I think people that did well never want to play in an IC again. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah, so we see Woke Flossy saying same in the chat, so. Um, yeah, so with that, we're going to go ahead and try and get everything all set up for our first game, unless uh, Chase or Rollco, so you want to have any opening thoughts you want to throw out there? Mm, no, I got nothing. I'm ready okay. to see some battles. Awesome. I don't really have anything other than ICs are awful. ICs are, in fact, awful, so um, yeah. it looks like we are going to go ahead and be right back once we get our video feed all set up. Thanks, y'all. And welcome back. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. So it's Adam Sam's Tacos versus Justin Snores. Um, yeah. Excited to see the match. Yeah. Do you, you know the teams here, right, Gemma? Yep. Uh, are you able to see them in the overlay that I sent you? Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I see it. It's there. Yeah. So it looks like we're going to be having a Series 6 battle here. Um, I was fairly certain that was already uh, the case, but looking at these two teams, that's almost guaranteed. So, uh, from, uh, from Adam's side, we see, uh, some interesting stuff with Terrakion next to a Vanillux, as well as a Pre-Marina, Sylveon, um, and Clefairy rounding out with Talonflame. I would say that this is probably the most standard team I've seen Adam use, though. Yeah, that's fair. It's not, it's not the most <laughs> standard team I've ever seen, but it is the most standard team I've ever seen Adam use. Yeah, I think that's really fair. <laughs> um, Adam known for bringing things like Greedent, like uh, Garbodor, and having some pretty insane success to the point where I, <laughs> I recognized a strategy from a um, from a Snorlax and Oranguru because of his uh, belly drum and uh, oh, what's the what is it, symbiosis where you take the item? yeah yeah where it like passes the barrier onto you or whatever yeah yeah so I was able to recognize that um, and then we see from Justin's side. Um, we see what also looks like a couple of staples here for Series 6. We see a PZ, we see an Urshifu, we see a Talonflame, and we see an Amoongus. Yeah, it's weird. The Hatterene kind of seems out of place on that team. Like, I mean, it seems to be the only Mon that wants to be in Trick Room. I mean, Amoongus is kind of indifferent towards it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Talonflame usually sets up Tailwind. Rotom's decently fast, even though people don't usually run max speed Rotom. Porygon Z is pretty fast, Urshifu's fast. Um, I, it may just be kind of like a, like whenever you feel speed control slipping from you, you like 
you have had in the back and then you switch it up to trick room to like keep things going in your favor but i'm super interested to see how it works yeah for sure i am as well They're, having some redirection also helps out the hattering with the amoebius there um so potentially just using it as a uh, pure offensive um <laughs> pokemon so here we see a really uh common lead in uh town flame poor Gonzi, right next to a town flame and vanillux yeah so most likely just going to be matching tailwinds from the talon flames um one of them might opt to try and protect and like stagger the tailwinds out uh for the other player um it, vanillix might just try to get some big damage off with something like a blizzard and porygon z is gonna you know go for the hyper beams yeah it's gonna be going for that max strike um and actually you just see switch, it out. switch out <laughs> interesting as the rodom switches in here um, Rodon presumably taking a blizzard really well, um, mm -hmm. but I think we're actually going to see a really interesting play right here. Uh, we see the matching Tailwinds, uh, both players opting to use that Gale, uh, Gale Wings priority for the Tailwind. Ooh, yeah. okay, that's cool. Yeah, so both of the Tailwinds end up matching each other, but... Adam ends up a little bit on top because of the icy wind lowering the speed of both the opponents, and it looks like that town flame is not safety goggles because of the hail damage, and Adam's is. Yeah, so that's super interesting to see from these two Pokemon right here. So, mm -hmm. um, despite the matching tailwinds, that Rota might be in a little bit of trouble from a freeze dry coming out, which you presume pretty much every Vanillax runs. It's Blizzard, freeze dry, and then take your pick at the other. Right. Yeah, Icy Wind, Ice Shard, Protect, Aurora Veil, something like that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, Freeze Dry could potentially be going into the Rotom. Uh, maybe Justin set this up as just, like, bait or just kind of there to, like, tank hits better. And, like, he didn't want to Dynamax right away. Uh, Talonflame's going to come out with a Brave Bird. If it's on to Talonflame, this should pick up the KO. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Talonflame's gone, which means that if Adam can keep his Tailwind, he keeps the speed control. Exactly. So we see the Freeze Dry come out here. Uh, because of that Icy Wind, um, I think Vanillax would be outspeeding anyway, but that Rotom dropped down just to the very last sliver of red. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately for Adam, it is a Citrus Berry variant, and it's going to be able to get a Thunderbolt off here. Um, it's not safe yeah. next turn, importantly. Um, a critical hit comes in there. I'm not quite sure that that mattered. <laughs> I highly doubt that it, that mattered. Uh, Talon of Flame has a really great speed stat, but everything else is pretty mediocre. Yeah. <laughs> we see uh, Chad over here flexing on some of the channel points, redeeming their uh, highlight my message. Uh, oh, nice. We do have That's some. Awesome. Yeah, we do have some uh, planned uh, channel points for the future. They don't work as well on Monday night friendlies, mm -hmm. but. Oh, and you know what? Our, our rolling overlay is not correct right now. Um, so here we see the Urshifu and the Rotom come out. Um, so importantly about that Urshifu is it, it doesn't have an Icy Wind down on it right now. Oh, I totally forgot that Vanellix got beat up. Um, I don't know if Justin remembers that information. Yeah, because um, it could but... be very tragic. <laughs> Um, if it's able to get this beat yeah, up. So yeah. I just want to say real quick, thanks for the follow, Matthew. Um, how's it going? Um, or Matthew WH, I think is what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's a little small on my screen. Um, so here we see the Terrakion. Go ahead and get a max off. Um, presumably this Vanillix, I, they're faster than Urshifu uh, and Terrakion. Oh, that is a Scarf, scarf Urshifu. Yeah. Scarfed Urshifu here, so if it can, either that or it's not a max speed Terrakion. Which oh, it's a weakness policy. A weakness policy Terrakion. <laughs> wow, that is gonna be some damage here. Uh, yeah. It's already at plus two. It's gonna go ahead and get up to plus five right here from the beat ups. Yeah, so it's gonna be three beat ups. Gonna get it up to plus five. And I think it even went for a knuckle, so it's gonna be max attack Terrakion, but. I don't know if it's going to survive a Hydro Pump if Rotom went for it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that, that Rotom is really low on health. Um, so this Max Knuckle, because we saw the... Is that Focus Sash there? Was it not Choice Scarf? It's not Max Speed Terrakion. Okay, so it's not Max Speed Terrakion. That's interesting. That is really interesting uh, information. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily... The hail's still in place, so yeah, Hydro Pump comes through and that Terrakion's gone. Yeah, um, the Urshifu will go ahead and go down to hail on this turn, um, and the Rotom 
will be slower than the Vanillox on the preceding turn, and I think mm -hmm. a uh, Freeze Dry should be enough to just go ahead and clean it up. Yeah, Even if it uh, the only problem is that Porygon Z is still in the back and Justin has yet to max it. And Sylveon's the last thing, so... I, Adam may have needed the Terrakion to kind of get through that. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I agree. I think Sylveon might have been a slightly better um, mm -hmm. pivot in that last turn. Uh, the fact that the Terrakion, uh, people are pointing out in chat, I think that the... Um, the fact that Vanillax being faster than the Terrakion is why it's not max, max speed. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, Vanillax isn't fast. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You need the Vanillax to be faster to get the beat-offs off in time. Yeah. That makes sense. But yeah, close combat just does way too much damage. And even if that Hydro Pump hadn't connected or just had gone for something like a Thunderbolt, between like that and the hail damage and like other things could happen, it, it, it was probably just going to be way too low. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this Rotom should pretty much get picked off by mm, the combination of any kind of spread damage into hail, um, but this Porygon Z will be taking something out before um, this yeah. turn is up. My guess is probably going to be that Sylveon um, as opposed to the Vanillux because I, I guess you do risk a, a blizzard freeze from the Vanillux. <laughs> yeah, which... you don't really want to play with that chance, especially when... Porygon can just kind of like strike everything down at this point. The only resist is was Terrakion and it's gone, so he can just kind of freely fire it. Max Art's gonna come out, uh, Into the targets Sylveon. down the Sylveon, okay. Oh, and it lives with seven. Yeah, yeah, Sylveon has amazing special defense, just yeah. naturally. So, uh, they are gonna be playing some of this speed games. We see the Icy Wind come out to match the speed drop, at least onto the uh, Porygon Z, but unfortunately not onto that Rodom anymore. And then uh, an interesting play here with the Mystical Fire going to drop the special attack of Porygon. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be enough still because I don't see a Vanillux living. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, um, especially oh, with the Sylveon goes down to the hail too. Yeah, but with the hail damage. <laughs> Both Tailwinds have now petered out. Uh, the Porygon Z is at minus one, the Rotom's at minus one, and the Vanillax is at minus one. So everyone's at minus one together here. Yeah, yeah, so it's basically just normal. Yeah, another Max Strike gonna come out. I think this Vanillax was Focus Sash, so it's gonna take it down to its Sash. Um, I believe it is still faster than the Rotom. But now I'm it's at minus two oh, versus now the Rotom. It's at minus two minus versus one. minus one. Yeah, yeah. because of the, the key protect last turn from Justin. Yeah, um, that. Protect turned out to not just be to keep spread damage, just spread damage, or to keep it on the field. It was so that it could pick off an Alex without any trouble. That was a really good protect, actually. Yeah, yeah that was a really, really well played protect right there. So, um, great game there. In game one, uh, going to Justin Snores. Um, in the next game, we are going to see um, the Battlers uh, come back with the exact same. Uh, here on the ATX BGC Monday Night Friendlies, we do best of threes. We do a series of best of threes. Um, we have four tonight. Um, and uh, the players will bring the same um, in each set. So this is a series six on the battle tower, the current battle tower rules, um, battle stadium doubles. And uh, yeah, I think that there are some interesting adjustments. I think if you're Adam, you want to save that Terrakion. If if uh, Justin opts to save the Porygon Z Max. Yeah, that may have just been a case of like not realizing how much damage the close combat and hydro pump was gonna do, mm -hmm. like comboed into the Terrakion. Um, it's it's really good here still, especially because, well, the Amoongus is there for redirection, but Justin didn't bring it last time. He may bring it this time, or he may just like switch up his game plan entirely and go for like the trick room stuff with Hatterene. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is kind of like scary because like Adam did lose that game, but he didn't like get completely stomped if it is one of those things where you're like oh if i just made like one or two plays differently i think i could have like taken control of that game yeah that's a dangerous position to be in because if you think that and you think well i'll just go back in with the same leads but your mm -hmm. opponent recognizes that then you're gonna be in a little bit of trouble if they've adjusted to what they anticipate what would be mm -hmm. best for your last lead or even anticipating your adjustment it's yeah. some of the mind games of a best of three that you know we didn't have to deal with this last weekend and <laughs> Uh, of course, uh, I'm referencing the uh, <laughs> Players' Cup 2 qualifying tournament. Uh, it was awful. I played 43 games. I had been in a qualifying position and accidentally clicked one more game. 
Um, and then I managed to lose it on a 15% play. See, and here's another problem I have. Here, Here's another problem yeah. I have with the IC, <laughs> is that you don't know if you're in a qualifying True. position. Yeah. So, like, you kind of have to keep going. Like, yeah, I was going to stop there. I was like, mm, this is about the points I think I can top out at. <laughs> so... Yeah. Yeah, um, luckily that's behind us. Hopefully we never have to do that again. <laughs> we'll bring it up a few more times tonight. Don't yeah, you worry. a few more times. Don't worry about it. Um, let's see here. We see the adjustment from Adam being bringing the Clefairy alongside that vanilla. That's really interesting. This is pretty passive from Adam. Um, potentially just wanting to get some icy wins off. But with Talonflame getting off the... Um, getting up to the tailwind i don't know how helpful that's gonna be yeah. um maybe just trying to get like a big blizzard off and do as much damage as you possibly can um talent flame actually switches out that's interesting into hattering uh, hattering in the back okay interesting so we see uh, here a no dynamax either <laughs> this is a wild uh, turn of events we see the helping hand blizzard here the Nelix is porygon's going for trick room <gasps> Oh, oh, the critical hit onto Hatterene and oh. the freeze! I don't think the freeze mattered because it's going down to hail damage this turn. Oh, oh, oh no. It's oh. such a, Oh, well, That's that tragic. was a great turn for Adam. That was a great obviously. turn. For Adam. Yeah, uh, not as good of a turn for Justin. No. Um, I mean, so obviously that crit mattered uh, because Hatterene would be around otherwise, but like. I don't know if it, like, you take a lot of damage on it, and I don't know if you want to Dynamax it afterwards. Ooh, and now the only things that Justin seems to have are the Amoongus and the Porygon Z. Well, the, the Town Flame is still in the back, uh, yes. potentially for a late game Dynamax. Um, <laughs> the battle was just canceled right there. <laughs> Justin seemed to recognize that that turn did not go in his favor. Yeah, I don't and... think we're going to see a switch in like that next game. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was a pretty aggressive play. I mean, like, I don't even know if it was, because I thought it was a pretty passive lead. I personally just thought it was going to be something like an Icy Wind and maybe a Follow Me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that Helping Hand Blizzard, obviously the crit just kind of like sealed it and like... Uh, the um, freeze to add insult injury on it. Yeah, yeah just, to make you, just to make you feel bad. Yeah, <laughs> again, but, the freeze not really factoring in because it just went down to hail damage but yeah. had it had it not crit and just frozen then it would have been still in a really commanding position yeah and the unfortunate end is that like now it's been revealed that the porygon z has trick room mm -hmm. um so yeah what do you do with that information uh it's, it's but yeah, that that was obviously just like not the turn one that you were planning on having. No, that's that's not how you uh, flow chart that one. I think. <laughs> I'm gonna switch in. I'm gonna get crit. I'm gonna get frozen. Yeah, not really going your way. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you? I mean, we did learn a ton of information that round, right? Um, yeah. What do you think the adjustments might be instead? Um, I don't know. Like I. If you're Adam, I don't think you go for the same thing again because that that turn worked out really well for you. But like, and and like like it was a fine idea. It's like okay, I'm just gonna try and get as much damage as I can with a blizzard, mm -hmm. and it did a lot of like if that Porygon Z had maxed, it would have done like half damage to it. And it just like went spectacularly. But I think that you're like okay, well, there's no way that even if I do lead the same thing, that this happens again, so I'm gonna change things up. Yeah. Okay, Talonflame on the other side of the field now. Huge adjustments coming <laughs> Big adjustments out. here from Dustin. Dustin. Mm -hmm. Let's see, um, the Sylveon being the adjustment alongside that Talonflame for Adam. What mm -hmm. do you think about that? Well, I, th I think that the Porygon Z doesn't want to take a Mystical Fire, even though that the Hyper Beam is still going to do a lot of damage to everything. Mm -hmm. Tailwind kind of seems a little useless from Talonflame on Adam's side. Um, Porygon Z, okay, deciding to switch out, doesn't want to take the Mystical Fire into Rotom. Um, we'll take the Mystical Fire better. Talonflame goes to the Tailwind, so speed control's on um, Justin's side. Taunt coming out, not wanting to go for the, tr not wanting to like Trick Room go up, 
and just a raw hyper voice, which should do decent damage. Yeah. Ooh, just right to citrus berry range, actually. Perfectly Eevee, as Chase would say. <laughs> yeah, so all in all, uh, a pretty good turn there. I think if you are um, Justin, you are able to preserve your Porygon Z. Um, this Sylveon, it, it's going to keep chunking things down, but it's not doing a ton of damage into either of these. Um, yeah. And... Uh... Adam's definitely going to want to Tailwind this turn, or or switch out the Talonflame at the least, because if he doesn't, then he'll never get the opportunity to do it again. Yeah. So we see here the switch out from the Sylveon into the Vanillux. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's the Tailwind. Tailwind still uh, being priority, because no damage was taken last turn. And here we see the priority being used for Brave Bird into that Vanillux, getting pretty big damage. Going to take some recoil. Um, and opts for a Thunderbolt into the Talon Plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is... getting with Yeah. Uh, and as we suspected in game one, the crit really did not. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so now Adam has the option to go into his Terrakion on both how much damage Vanellix took from the Brave Bird that first turn. I don't think he's going to be able to get the beat-ups off. Yeah, and I think the scary thing here, too, is the fact that this Talonflame outspeeds his Terrakion as well. So it can, <laughs> it can go for chip damage and that, and just continue to get this down. Um, mm -hmm. Potentially even being in a position where Rodom could max here, um, you know, uh, just to go ahead and wipe the Terrakion off the field, because... Yeah. Do we think that the Rodom... We didn't get to see the speed interaction last time because Rodom was at minus one. Do we think that Rodom uh, could outspeed the Trachyon, given that um, it's a pretty slow Trachyon? It depends. I assume that the Terrakion is one point slower than max speed Timid Vanellix. I actually <laughs> don't know Vanellix's base speed. I think it's 80. I'm not sure about that. Yeah. And Rodom's kind of weird because it is base 86 speed, but people run many, many varying speeds on it, so I have no idea how fast Justin's Rotom is. Yeah. We, we might get some of that information here this turn. Because, um, yeah, mm -hmm. majority of that last set, we just saw that the Rotom being... Um, and we actually do see a Dynamax here, presumably from this Rotom. Yeah, okay, so I think probably what Justin's gonna be going for is like a Brave Bird into the Vanellix to prevent a Vita from going off, and then going for a Max Geyser to ensure that a Hydro Pump doesn't miss, and I'm guessing that Urshifu's in the back and is gonna be able to finish off the Terrakion. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, we see the Brave Bird come out. Um, yeah. This, uh, the Terrakion, I believe, opted for a Max Rockfall, so it's gonna be a little bit chunkier here. Um, getting that uh, doubling of Spadef in the sand, um, mm -hmm. which will definitely help it live some more. Yeah. It is going to reduce the damage coming out from the presumably max geyser this Rotom is going for. Yeah, and it will also proc the weakness policy on this Trachyon, which should help for damage output if if Adam can maneuver around um, mm -hmm. the potential Urshifu in the back. Yeah. Um, yeah, that I'd say that, that I'd say that's still in range of close combat. Yeah, I believe we saw close combat doing like nearly sixty percent last time, and that did about forty. Yeah. Um, so, unless well, the one play that Adam has is uh, Urshifu doesn't hit through Max Guard if it's not Dynamaxed. Yeah. So uh, the fact that it is Sash though um, presents a lot of a lot of trouble here. Yeah, if I was uh, Justin, the thing that I would play around would be Max Guard followed by a Hyper Voice and then a Quick Attack after. So I actually wouldn't be surprised if Justin tried to like mimic. Uh, it looks like he didn't go for the Protect because he's faster. Yep. Uh, close Combat comes into the Max Guard, not going to get the KO. Guys are coming out into the Sylveon. I don't, I think Sylveon should be able to survive this. Yeah, yep, just barely though. Like Hyper Voice is going to take the Urshifu down to Sash, and if that Sylveon has Quick Attack... This does Oh look... no, it doesn't oh. matter because the Tailwind just went out. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. So I think that... Hmm. It's, the thing is, like, Justin needs to 
to like get rid of this Sylveon and keep the, like because Urshifu can finish off the Terrakion, so maybe yeah, he's gonna switch out into the Porygon Z uh, and maybe Max Guard the Rotom. Yep. Yeah, that's Great sick play. play. Mm -hmm. Quick attack coming into the Porygon Z. Uh, Rockfall coming into the Max Guard. Okay, and now this turn. Um, with the Tailwinds both out, I still don't know exactly how fast that Terrakion is. It's faster than the Rotom, but it might be slower than the, um, Porygon Z, but I think this is just going to be a double up into the Sylveon. Yeah, I, I think you have to at this point, because otherwise... Yeah, just to ensure that it goes down. Yeah, and the, and the fact that, uh, the Max Rockfall went into the Rotom last turn, uh, really kind of sealing, or, uh, helping Justin out by not having that sand potential chip to take off that last little HP bar from the Urshifu. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, this is kind of a tricky turn to navigate. Yeah. Porygon Z Porygon goes for the is hyper beam. fastest. It gets the hyper beam off. Into God, that's a sick animation. Yeah, yeah and that's going to seal it for Adam. Yeah, I think that his potential play there was maybe a miss on the hyper beam into like a rock fall double ko or rock slide double ko i think that if i think that if justin doubled into the um uh into the sylveon then if he had protected and gotten a ko onto the porygon z mm -hmm then he still could have won. Yeah, he, he would have, yeah. It was a really close game. Um, that ends our streak, actually, of games... No, actually, that continues our streak. That we was just, a game three. No, it was just a very, very short game two. Yeah, an incredibly short game two there. Um, so, uh, really well played to our two opponents. Uh, congratulations to Justin Snores on the victory, and very well played to Adam Santakis. Um, we see yeah, GG's that last in turn the is a, It's a tough one to call, like... Because yeah. it... it and like, Justin even could have just like attacked into the Terrakion to like cover for the option. Yeah, exactly. Uh hey, you like that video? We think you should check this out. And YouTube thinks you should check this one out. Be sure to subscribe for more content.